In this video, we're going to design a singly reinforced uh, rectangular concrete beam with a given uh, section geometry. Uh, so we're given our uh, height and width of our section, and we're only designing for our steel. Um, so it's not necessarily three bars we're going to design for the actual steel that we'll include. Uh, we're given our concrete strength, our grade 60 steel, our span length and our loading, a distributed load with both a dead load and a live load. So the first thing that we need to do is compute our factor design moment, our MU and our MN required. And we can start by uh, calculating our factored uh, distributed load. So 1.2 times our uh, distributed dead load plus 1.6 times our distributed live load. Uh, which will give us a factor distributed load of 5.6 kips per foot. So we can use this then to find our factored ultimate moment, which will be at mid-span. So for our uh, simply supported uh, beam with a distributed load, it'll be WL squared over 8, so 5.6 kips per feet times our length, 30 feet squared over 8 uh, to give us our factored ultimate moment of 7,560 kip inches. Um, and we're taking this times 12 feet or 12 inches per foot here uh, to get to our units of kip inches. Um, so then we can find our MN required. And our MN required is our MU, 7560, divided by our fee, 0 0.9. And this fee is assuming uh, tension-controlled behavior. So we'll need to check that we're tension-controlled as, as we move forward. Uh, so we'll get our MN required then to be 8,400 kip inches. And this is the value we'll use uh, moving forward. Because we already have our section geometry, uh, we can skip ahead a few steps. Um, so we'll start here in, in step four, where uh, we, we um, in previous examples, uh, estimated our, our H and our B, and then uh, approximated our D. Um, so in this case, we'll just need to approximate our D. Um, so we're going to assume that we have number nine bars. And then we can find our D. So our D is going to be equal to our height, which is 30 inches, minus half of the diameter of our uh, longitudinal bar, 1.128 for number 9, divided by 2, uh, minus 0.5 inches, which is the uh, width of our stirrups, and then minus 1.5 inches, which is the width of, or the, the magnitude of our cover. Um, so we'll get 27.4 inches um, is our D, and remember we're assuming a number 9 bar. We're next ready to uh, calculate our AS required, um, and we're going to do this based on an approximation of our lever arm um, as 0.9D. Uh, so we'll first um, set our MN um, approximate expression, so MN uh, equal to ASFY times 0.9D, and set this equal to our MN uh, required that we found earlier in the example. We can solve this expression for AS, and we'll now call this AS required, which will just be our MN required divided by f y times 0.9 d. Uh, so plugging in our values, we had our mn required is 8400 uh, kip inches divided by our a, uh, f y, which is uh, 60 ksi times 0.9. And then our d, which we found in our previous step to be 27.4 uh, inches. So we can cal uh, calculate our AS required to be 5.68 uh, 
square inches. We can then uh, use a design aid or uh, just our knowledge of the area of the bars and iteration on, on different numbers um, to look for our best option of, of the size of the bars and the number of bars that uh, will be required. Um, so I, I did this and, and I saw that our best two options would be either four number 11s or five number 10s. Um, so that also that we can get all our bars in our cross section width. Um, so for this example, we're gonna use uh, four number 11s and move forward with that. Um, so if you remember, we assumed a, a bar diameter of uh, with a number nine bar. Um, so we need to go back and now recalculate our D um, based on our number 11 bar. Um, so to do this, we'll take our D equal to our overall height, 30 inches. Uh, we'll subtract out half of our bar diameter. So 1.41, the diameter of our number 11 bar divided by two. Um, we'll take out 0.5 inches, which is the diameter of our stirrups. And then 1.5 inches is our cover. And we'll get D equal to 27.3 inches. And this will be our D value that we'll use moving forward. And then also um, the area of a steel that we'll use moving forward in this example. We'll next need to make sure that all of our bars fit in our available cross-section width with the required spacing um, that's required by the ACI. Uh, so we'll do this with our, our two checks and our, our, uh, our spacing requirements. So first, our spacing requirements are the maximum of our bar diameter and uh, one inch. So for us, we'll have um, the bar diameter controlling. Uh, we also need to find the diameter of uh, our bend of our stirrups, which is four d or four times the diameter of our stirrup. So four times 0.5 inches is two inches. Um, so now we can plug all of our values into our two ACI expressions. Um, so the first two times our cover 1.5 plus two times our stirrup 0.5 plus uh, n four bars times 1.41 inches plus n minus one so three spaces times 1.41 inches uh, per space and this will give us a value of 13.9 inches uh, which is less than our base width of 15 inches so we know that our first check is okay. So next we can do um, our, our second uh, check. So two times our cover 1.5 inches plus two times 0.5 inches plus the diameter of our bend two inches, which we found above plus three times diameter of our bar 1.41 plus three times the diameter of our bar 1.41 and we'll get a value of 14.5 is our required width which is less than our width of 15 inches uh, so we're okay here as well so we can fit all of our bars in our available uh, base width We'll next find our uh, nominal capacity of our actual uh, section. Um, so we need to first find our, our beta one. Um, so we remember we have uh, five KSI concrete. So we'll have a beta one equal to uh, 0.8. Uh, so we can plug all of our values in and find our C, uh, which we remember C is based on equilibrium. So tension equal to compression um, in our cross section. And we'll have uh, AS 6.24 square inches, FY uh, 60 KSI, uh, 0.85, F prime C 5 KSI, beta 1.8, and B 15 inches. And we'll find our C to be 7.3 inches. Uh, we can then use our C to determine if our steel is yielded and if our steel is in the tension controlled region. Um, so we'll have 0 0.003 
times our D, 27.3 inches minus 7.3 inches, all divided by C, 7.3 inches, uh, to give us an epsilon S, uh, or the strain in our steel of 0.0082. Uh, um, so we can see that this is greater than our tension controlled limit of 0 0.005. So we're okay here. Um, so we know our steel's yielded and we know we can use a phi factor of 0.9. Um, so then we can plug in to our uh, nominal moment uh, expression, uh, which is our force times our lever arm. Uh, so our AS is 6.2 four square inches, Fy is 60 KSI, our D, 27.3 inches, and then minus uh, beta 1.8 times 7.3 inches divided by 2. So we'll get an MN uh, equal to 9,100 and 28 kip inches. And we can compare this to our MN required from before. And we'll find our MN, or we found our MN required to be 8,400 uh, kip inches. Uh, so we can see that our uh, MN, the capacity of our actual section, uh, is greater than our MN required. So we're OK here as well. The final step would be to uh, revise our self-weight and modify the design as needed, but since we were given our section dimensions, we don't need to revise our self-weight. Um, so this is our final design, and uh, we found that uh, the steel that we would need in this section is uh, four number 11 bars.